Pretty sure if you were able to get the cube root of 6. Okay, I'm, I'm 10, 12 seconds over. Now, let me show you this problem. Firstly, do you have any questions on the whole polynomial idea, breaking that up? Any questions on what we're allowed to do over here? We're allowed to uh, evaluate limits by just substituting numbers, provided we don't run into any problems. Problems would be zero on a denominator, or things that don't validate our domain. That would be a problem. I'm sorry, invalidate our domain. That don't invalidate our domain. I think this is now going to answer your question. In every previous problem, we were able to just substitute in that number into our limit because we knew we could break it up into uh, forms of polynomials or, or basically, because they're polynomials, powers with individual x's multiplied by constants, right? And we could do those limits. That's why we were able to do this stuff is because we could have shown all that breaking it up and just evaluated constant limits and limits that just had x's and then taking the powers later. The only difference with this one is, if you try to do that, if you separate this by division, the numerators can work just fine. Because you're going to get how much on the numerator? It's a polynomial, right? You get zero. Is it okay to have zero on a numerator? Sure. Yet on a numerator, yes. Now, what would happen, though, if you try to substitute in this two down here? Need zero. The limit of your denominator would be zero. Is that a good thing to have? No. That's a problem. We can't ever have that. What do we do? The top is the difference of squares. The top is a difference. So wait a second, though. Are you saying that if I do this, I know you all know a difference of squares, right? What's it going to factor as? Are you saying that I should be able to simplify those out of this expression? <coughs> well, wait a second. Wouldn't we be simplifying out a domain issue? You're not actually going to ever get to that point. Say that again. Say it loud. You're not going to actually ever get to the point two on the graph. So are we simplifying out a domain issue? Not. He's exactly right. Are we actually getting to the point two? No. So really, this is kind of weird, but with a limit, we're technically not making anything, any mistake here. We're not actually getting to two. But we're, we're actually getting to that point. So when we look at this, we go, oh, okay. We could just simplify that out. We're not simplifying out a domain problem because none exists because we're not actually getting to two. You just can't evaluate the limit by plugging it in because according to this function, yes, you will at that point. That's the difference between polynomials that don't have issues and things like this that do, that have domain problems. If you're trying to find the limit of this guy as you're going to two, well, there, there's a problem with that. There's a hole there, right? There, there's, do you recognize, firstly, that there is a hole and not an asymptote here? What was the difference between a hole and an asymptote according to the algebra? Oh, you better know. You got to know that. Say that louder. You're right. Asymptotes don't factor out. Holes do factor out. Do you remember that? So if you can simplify it out, that's a hole. If you can't, you have some sort of an asymptote. So in this case, yes, we have a hole. That means that if you have a hole in your graph, can you actually find out where the function is at that point? You can't even do it. doesn't even exist. So we have to do limits to find that out. But in order to, to do that, we do have to simplify this, this function. We can factor. We can simplify because we're actually not getting to the two. This is OK. It's OK because x, x never equals 2. Never gets there. Really close? Yes. So what we can do now is say, all right, then this, according to the limit, is exactly the same thing as that. Is that now a polynomial? Sure. Can you plug in 2? How much are you going to get? That's kind of neat, right? Oh, that should be amazing to you. You're like, yeah, we can simplify this stuff out because we're not actually getting there. Therefore, we change these weird-looking 
of holy functions, not because they happen on Sundays, but because you know we have it so And then we can just plug in the number because now it's a polynomial and we're, we're good to go. So if you can factor and simplify, then you can find the limit. Does that make sense to you? That's awesome. A few more? Okay. We're going to make them a little bit more advanced and a little bit more advanced so by the end of the day we'll have some pretty unique things going on, okay? Now, before you get all crazy and start factoring everything that you see, you might want to just check that point and see if it's even a problem, all right? Because sometimes they might give you that stuff and there's no issue. It'd be like this example. This would have an issue if we were going to the limit of x equals, or x is approaching 3. Wouldn't that be a problem? But we're not. We're going to 2, so there was no problem here. So at least check and make sure you actually have a problem before you start factoring things out. Make sense? So try it. Do I have a problem if I try to evaluate at negative 4? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I do. I get 0 over 0, right? That means you should be able to factor. Hey, if you get 0 over 0, I told you this is the property of mathematics. If you get 0 over 0 when plugging the same number, that means x minus that number is a root. That means somewhere over here I can guarantee you're going to have an x plus 4. Because x minus negative 4 is x plus 4. This will be x plus 4 times something. This will be x plus 4 times something, and then we should be able to simplify out that problem. Why don't you try that right now? Factor that. I want you to simplify it, and then see if you can evaluate the limit of what you get out of that. It should be your quotient, I suppose. Did you factor? Was there an x plus 4 like I magically predicted? Yeah. I love when that happens too. So if you were to factor this out, by the way, have you noticed that when you're factoring, you still must have the limit notation? Do you see that on the board? You've got to have limit. Look at Here's a limit. Here's a limit. Here's a limit. When did I stop using limit? When I finally actually was able to plug in the number. Do you see that? You must have a limit. I will mark you out points if you don't have those limits. If you go, I'm going to write this limit, but not that one, not that one, I'm just going to get my answer. Mm -mm. That's not how limits work. If you say you don't have a limit here, you start crossing stuff out, and then you magically plug in two, you've made a domain issue. If you're with limits, that's okay. So you have to say, I'm working with limits here until you get down to this point. Do you see the point? All right. So we still have a limit. By the way, that's going to be annoying, I know, because you're going to have lots of steps in some of these limits, but you need to do it. We're going to factor. We're going to factor. See anything that simplifies out of our problem? <laughs> now, some of you might be asking, well, wait a second. Don't I still have a domain issue, because if I plug in 3, I have a problem. Don't I still have a domain issue? The answer is, well, yeah, sure, at 3, but are we trying to figure out what's happening around 3? No. I don't care about 3. What point am I trying to figure around? Yeah, yeah so I've gotten rid of the problem, because as soon as I cross out this x plus 4, now when I substitute in negative 4, it's no longer an issue. Can you now evaluate at negative 4? Yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. Notice how I've written limit, limit, factored limit still, and now I can put, well, this is going to equal 2 over negative 4 minus 3. I've now evaluated my limit. I don't write the limit notation any longer because I, I don't have any more variables. As soon as you substitute in for your variable, that is your limit. 
and we get negative two sevenths as our limit. How many people negative two sevenths feel okay with this? Is this understandable? Do you guys are starting to get the, the concept of working with this stuff? It's kind of interesting, isn't it? What we can do. I hope it's interesting to you. Oh, how do we have it up there? Cool. All right. Oh my gosh. What are you going to do first, do you think? Check. Well, before you factor, don't be crazy on factoring. Check. What are you going to check. do? Check. You're going to check it. Yeah, check the five. Because if it works, well, there's no reason to factor it. That would just be a waste of time. You'd probably confuse yourself, too. Like, wait, nothing simplifies. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Now, if you try the five here, do you have a problem? Okay. So if you do have a problem, then what do you do? Now you factor. <laughs> so if you haven't factored already, go ahead and factor. What's the top one factor as? Plus two minus five? Plus two minus five? How about the denominator? What have we got there? Oh, minus five, minus five. All right. Did you all factor it correctly? All right. Thank God. Good. At least we factored it correctly. Do you see anything that simplifies? Wait, not not both x minus fives? One x. So we go here and here, yes? And what we get out of this, this is an important example for you to see, you get x plus 2, x is still approaching 5, x minus 5. Try to plug in the 5, what are you going to get? Zero. zero. You're going to 7 over 0. Is that still a problem? Yes. Oh, man. So wait a second. What do you do if you still have a domain issue on this thing. I've now given you two cases. I've given you cases where the problem, the, the domain issue is a hole. Do you see that? It's a hole and you can get rid of a hole. It's a removable discontinuity and you can find the limit of that. It's very easy. You factor it and then you evaluate. Now I've also given you another case where not only do we have a hole here, we actually have, what is that when you can't simplify out the domain issue? That is a vertical asymptote. So now we have this issue. What are we going to deal with? How are we going to do that? Well, this is where you're going to use what's called a sign <coughs> analysis test. Listen, you, you really do have to comprehend that if you can get a zero over a zero, like you did over here, you're going to be able to at least factor it and simplify something, right? Sometimes, as I've shown you, it will get rid of the problem <coughs> area, and you can just substitute in a number and be just fine. That happened here, and that happened here. Not sure if you're okay with that one. Now, other times, sure, we got zero over zero. We factored it, we got rid of a, what looked like a problem area, and it was, that's like a hole. However, can you get rid of this x minus five in any way whatsoever? If you can't, what was that called again? It's an asymptote. What you have to do is a sign analysis test. Here's what you do with a sign analysis test. You put the numbers that will make the numerator and the denominator equal to zero. Put that on a number line. What numbers am I talking about here? Five. five, definitely. Five, because we want to find out what's happened at five, and that was our problem area. So five is going to have to go over here somewhere. So far, so good? Now, 